is no it we are live now dr aprachita yes uh, shall i begin yes yeah. okay please ma'am yes yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. I take this opportunity to welcome you all to this webinar, which is organized jointly by the ASOCHEM and the Embassy of Costa Rica in India on India and Costa Rica, a decade of partnership and future roadmap. Uh, this is to celebrate the 199th birthday of Costa Rica. So very happy birthday to Costa Rica to ambassador here. Uh, before we begin the formal program, I would like to speak a few uh, about Costa Rica India relations for a few minutes. Uh, our linkages with Costa Rica are relatively new in terms of a formal diplomatic sense. However, our informal relationship predates by many decades. It is of great interest, uh, a great deal of interest in Costa Rica about India especially from the perspective of wellness tourism, a great deal of curiosity and belief among the people of Costa Rica about yoga and Ayurveda. In fact, the famous autobiographical book on Gandhi that was published in Spanish and which was translated from English into Spanish and later on released by the then uh, president of Costa Rica, Oscar Arias, was a sign of a growing relations between the two countries. The Indian actor Prabhakar Sharan and his movie Enredados, La Confusion is another example of close cultural relations and linkages between India and Costa Rica. The presence of Indians in Costa Rica also speaks volumes about this cordial relationship, which is mutually accepted by both sides, both India and Costa Rica. Today, among in the, uh, in the webinar, we have a wide variety of luminary speakers speaking on various aspects of India and Costa Rica relations from the perspective of trade, business, commerce, as well as trying to attempt and define a future trajectory of this significant partnership between India and Costa Rica. Today we have among us the two ambassadors from the two countries, Costa Rica and India, the president of ASUCHA, as well as a large number of speakers from India and Costa Rica, bringing forth potential partnerships for the future. Before I invite the speakers to make their presentations, I would like to briefly speak on three points. The first, of course, and the most important, the aim by Costa Rica to fulfill its commitment to achieve zero carbon initiative by 2020. It's a highly commendable effort, and a lot can be learned from this initiative made by Costa Rica in this regard. Best practices followed by both countries can be shared, which can be mutually beneficial for the societies in both the countries. Costa Rica is one of the most progressive as well as economically rising powers, not only in Central America, but among the Latin American countries as well. Secondly, I would like to draw your attention to this very idea, because as, as uh, with my background as a researcher on Latin American studies for more than two and a half decades, to me, it becomes very clear that whereas we can look at Costa Rica and India relationship in a more holistic or a comprehensive manner, there exists a plethora of issues that are emerging on both sides, both in terms of bilateral and multilateral fora. And India and Costa Rica can work together jointly to find solutions to have answers for these questions. In fact, we could narrow down the focus of all to specific issue-based cooperation. For instance, the success of Costa Rica in, in dealing with the current COVID-19 pandemic, which has which uh, ravaged the whole world. In fact, their success story is very, very uh, important. It, it, uh, when we look at India, we may not be able to replicate what, ha what has happened in Costa Rica, given our large numbers. But there are smaller states in India which can learn, which can study, which can examine these initiatives and see if they, we can learn something for them and implement them in the smaller states of India, like where I am sitting right now, Goa, which has a, which is a population of 14 million, or other smaller states like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, and Uttarakhand. However, however, uh, so uh, so th this could be one of the 
things where we can we can work with Costa Rica, not necessarily largely in, in comprehensive terms, but also in very, very specific terms. And thirdly, in terms of tourism and hospitality se sector, especially in the wellness tourism sector, states in India that are geared to wellness tourism could independently establish linkages with Costa Rica, especially states that are that are uh, that are uh, uh, that are uh, talking about wellness tourism, like uh, yoga and Ayurveda, and states like Chhattisgarh, uh, Uttarakhand, and and as well as Kerala. This could work to strengthen relationship between the two countries. At this point, I will not make any comments on trade and economic aspects or commerce because there are many speakers who are speaking on the subject today. Uh, just a point that once all the speakers are through with their presentations, we will have a Q&A session, which has already been put in the program schedule. Now, without taking much time, may I now request Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani, the president of ASOCHAM and co-founder of uh, and managing director of Hiranandani Group of Companies to make his welcome remarks. A little bit about Mr. Hiranandani. Mr. Hiranandani has a doctorate in philosophy on the, on the theme, Housing Revolution in India, Challenges and Prospects. He has an FCA from Institute of Chartered Accountants of India and a bachelor's from the Mumbai University. Mr. Hiranandani is known as bachelor, a builder extraordinary and a visionary man behind redesigning the skyline of Mumbai. He has played a leadership and a role and a senior advisory roles in various industry bodies like Maharashtra Chamber of Housing, uh, Housing Industry, Indian Merchants Chamber, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Confederation of Real Estate Developers Association of India. May I welcome Mr. Hiranandani uh, to give his welcome remarks. Thank you. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful occasion today on this anniversary, 109th anniversary of Costa Rica. We are absolutely delighted that we could host this webinar today to actually uh, link up with the other part of the globe. We in India over here are delighted, delighted to be in touch and in communication with Costa Rica. We are really grateful for His Excellency, uh, Mr. Rawat, the Ambassador of India to Costa Rica. We are pleased to have His Excellency, Mr. Claudio Montero, uh, the Ambassador of Costa Rica to India, Mr. Ravi Banga, the former Ambassador of India to Colombia and Ecuador, Mr. George George of Zandara Resorts, Mr. Saurabh Dasgupta of the Costa Rica India Association, Mr. Munish Panchanda, Mr. Alok Kumar, and of course, Aparajita for her extensive introduction uh, of myself. Thank you very much for being here today. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. India and Costa Rica's relationships have been of a very recent time. However, in this short time, we have found many things to bridge our two countries and a special relationship between our two countries has come about between of the objectives and the vision that is shown in the leadership of our two countries. We are equally wanting to have peace and Costa Rica is one of the few countries in the world which has actually put down its army and has only a police force. I must congratulate that the peace thinking thought process which has happened for Costa Rica, we can only hope that if we don't have the problems on our borders, we will also follow the good example which Costa Rica has been doing. The second most thing which Aparajita already mentioned was the fact of the carbon footprint. Our beloved Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, is of an equal thought process of reducing the carbon uh, footprint in India and has also gone ahead in the accord that has been signed that we will accelerate uh, the environment improvement in the country. And this is something similar to what Costa Rica has actually envisaged. Our visits of our uh, vice president of uh, Mr. Venkat Naidu visited Costa Rica in 2019. And of course, uh, the, uh, your second vice president has visited India earlier 
into this country and we are hoping that more delegations will come across to each of the two countries in order to bring about uh, a greater and more cordial relationship as uh, we are looking forward to much more business commerce relationship <coughs> of our two countries and we are very very happy that many companies have already made a beginning we have Mahindra's, Bajaj, Larson and Tubro, Havel, Sylvania, UPL Limited, Vipro, Infosys, which are there. And we are looking forward to more investment into Costa Rica and also the concept of Atma Nirbar India and more and more development in the door zones that we are making on the industrial side. So I am very happy that our relationship should flower more Asajam would like to take the lead in bringing about the bridging between these two countries. And thank you very much, Your Excellencies, for being over here today and also all the other partners today to improve the bridging and to take it to the next level. We do hope the good wishes on your Independence Day and many more wonderful things. I hope that in the next 200th uh, anniversary, we will, of course, celebrate it in a much bigger way. And hopefully we can even embrace ourselves personally. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Mr. Hiranandani, for those uh, very thought-provoking thought remarks. I'm sure that this will set the trend uh, for the whole uh, webinar today. Now, may I now invite Ambassador, His Excellency, Mr. Ravi Bangar. Mr. Ravi Bangar was India's ambassador to Colombia and to Ecuador. Before he speaks, may I just introduce him? Uh, Mr. Bangar has been a career foreign service officer. He had been the ambassador of India to Colombia and Ecuador in October 2017. He was India's high commissioner to Cyprus. And he, apart from that, he had various assignments in his diplomatic career, both bilateral and multilateral, covering political, economic, commercial and development work. He was with the external uh, external minister, external affairs ministry as deputy secretary Gulf director Africa. He was uh, with the Africa uh, West Africa division. He was with the East and Southeast uh, Africa division. He was in the diplomatic missions in Buenos Aires, mid Maputo, The Hague, Lima, Caracas, Singapore, as well as the deputy permanent representative of India at the WTO. He also chaired the Working Group on Trade, Debt, Finance at the WTO in 2007. And in 2011, he led the fourth high-level forum of aid effectiveness held in Busan in the Republic of Korea. May I now welcome Ambassador Bangar, sir. Thank you, Aparida, for this uh, very extensive introduction. Uh, buenos dias to Costa Ricans, and good evening to fellow Indians here those who are attending this webinar. Ambassador Upinder Rawat, Ambassador Claudio Ansorena, Mr. Hiranandani, President Asuchan, uh, fellow speakers, uh, Dr. Apajita Gangopati, our moderator, and dear participants. I extend my warm greetings to the government and the people of Costa Rica in its celebrations of the 199th anniversary of its independence. In normal times, celebrations of this day would have been very different. But as we all know, these are not the normal times. I wish to thank the association, the organizer of the event, in coming up with this model in the continuing times of the pandemic. This is a reflection of indomitable human spirit to overcome challenges. Let us hope the next year the life will be back on track. Columbus' fourth Atlantic voyage in 1502 landed him at the shores of Costa Rica, where he remained for 18 days refitting ships. Thus began the colonial period. Costa Rica's history has been created and spearheaded by its common people who rose against the invaders and fought bravely. These common people are role models for Ticos as the Costa Ricans are called. One of the names that immediately comes to my mind 
is a legendary Pancha Carrasco. He joined the army as a cook and a medic, but wanted her contribution to be just more than that. With an apron full of bullets, she grabbed a rifle and joined the army's defenses during the second battle of Rivas, effectively becoming the first woman in Costa Rica's military. Another commoner is Juan Santa Maria, a national hero, joined the army as a drummer. His passion and bravery helped him end the second battle of Rivas. All this happened in just a year before India's first war of independence from the British in 1857. Strengthening the traditions of democracy for which Costa Rica was to become framed throughout Latin America was a victory in 1889 of President Joaquim Rodriguez in what is considered the first entirely free and fair election held in all of Central America. December 1, 1948 is a historic day for Costa Rica. President Figueres Ferrer abolished the military of Costa Rica after achieving victory in the civil war that year. This reminds me of the Kalinga War in ancient India. This war marked the close of empire building and military conquests. The bloodshed of this war prompted Ashoka to adopt Buddhism. In a ceremony in the Quartel Bejavista, in the capital San Jose, Figueres broke a wall with a mallet symbolizing an end to Costa Rica's military spirit. Thus, December 1 is celebrated all over the country, the Army Abolition Day. The abolition of the military was added to the Constitution in Article 12 in 1949. The financial resources which were wasted on guns were channeled into education and culture. The Constitution of 1871 provides for religious tolerance. Costa Rica abolished death penalty in 1882. Taking into consideration these factors and efforts of Costa Rica to promote peace in the region, the UN thought it appropriate to establish EU peace, the University of Peace Studies in Costa Rica to a UN resolution in 1980. In this, we find another common link between India and the Central American countries. Mahatma Gandhi struggled for freedom with peaceful means, contributing ahimsa, non-violence as the only arm against the colonial power. He made non-violence his dharma, advocating his practice in daily life. The message of this apostle of peace has been recognized universally in a world which continues to pay a heavy price due to senseless violence and avoidable suffering. On the economic front, Costa Rican leaders soon realized the potential for coffee cultivation and strove to promote coffee planting. From the 1840s, a constant stream of ox carts carried coffee from the Valle Central to Pacific ports and ships bound for Europe. This trade triggered British investment. Costa Ricans achieved a competitive advantage over coffee farmers in other Latin American countries. Today, exports of bananas, coffee, sugar, and meat are the backbone of its commodity exports. In modern times, Costa Rica has diversified its economy, which I call two T's, that is, technology and tourism. Various industrial and process agricultural products have broadened exports as of high value added goods, including medical devices. Foreign investors remain attracted by the country's political stability and relatively high education levels, as well as the incentives offered in the free trade zones. Costa Rica has attracted one of the highest levels of FDI per capita in Latin America. In the region, Costa Rica has tried to play an active role. 
that earth is rooted in its history. When Mexico declared its independence from Spain in 1821, Costa Rica with other parts of Central America joined the short-lived Mexican Empire. In 1823, Costa Rica helped create United Provinces of Central America, but this enchanted with the strife in the other four states of the Federation severed its ties in 1838. Costa Rica joined the Central American Common Market in 1962. India took the first step in according high priority to its cordial relations with Costa Rica with the visit of Vice President about a year and a half ago. This was the first ever high-level visit from India to Costa Rica. We very much look forward to a presidential visit from there to India to provide further impetus to our growing relation. I'm confident that the letter of intent to collaborate in the field of biotechnology signed during the visit will have mutually beneficial and concrete outcomes. Costa Rica with an area that of Punjab and a population of the city of Ahmedabad, yet it has more than six times the GDP per capita of India. Costa Rica offers significant trade and investment opportunities for Indian business. The areas holding potential are pharmaceuticals, power equipment, science and technology, biotechnology, environment sciences and technologies to combat environment degradation and climate change, culture, education, Ayurveda and yoga, etc. Finally, I can't resist mentioning the role of another famous Tiku, that is President Oscar Arias, the winner of 1987 Nobel Peace Prize. In his acceptance speech, he said, and I quote, peace is a never ending process. The work of many decisions by many people in many countries. It is an attitude, a way of life, a way of solving problems and resolving conflicts. It requires us to work and live together. It is for the new generation that we must understand more than ever that peace can only be achieved through its own instruments, that is, dialogue and understanding, tolerance and forgiveness, peace and democracy, unquote. I'm sure Costa Rica will continue to celebrate life with this mantra of Pura Vida, that is pure life. May Costa Rica continue in its march to secure peace, progress, prosperity in the years to come. Gracias a todos por su paciencia. Thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Uh, it was a pleasure to listen to you, especially the two T's. I'm sure that, uh, you know, the, the focus could be on those on tourism and technology. Of course, on climate change, I think Costa Rica stands out as an exceptional case on climate change. Uh, sometimes I, I, I when I when I when as, as a student of Latin American studies and as also a teacher of Latin American studies I often uh, wonder why there is so much focus on on the larger countries of Latin America I think we need to focus on the smaller countries as well and there are so many things that we can learn as well as mutually share with these countries especially a country such as Costa Rica so thank you sir for your words now may I request for the key remarks his Excellency Ambassador uh, Claudio Ansorena Montero. Ambassador Claudio Ansorena Montero is currently the ambassador of Costa Rica to India. Before this, he was a consultant with IADB Costa Rica on public investment uh, and a coordinator for the institutional memory of Institute of Social Policy of Costa Rica. He was a senior advisor to, for Central America, Venezuela, Mexico, and Spain at the World Bank Group. Ambassador is also has been a Fulbright scholar and a visiting fellow at the Harvard University. May I welcome Ambassador? Well, welcome, sir. And uh, may we have your keynote remarks? Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here. And good evening to everyone. Ambassador Obama.
Spanish, and your presentation was excellent. Dr. Hirandani, it's a pleasure to meet you, and I hope uh, we can meet uh, soon, personally. My friend, uh, George Muthut, I hope that we have the time to, to share again uh, some uh, wine uh, in a beach in, uh, in Kerala or in Costa Rica. Uh, thank you, Dr. Aprajita, for hosting and uh, being the moderator of this excellent panel. And friends from Asocham, uh, thank you for being here also. And good morning to all my friends and colleagues in the other side of the time zone, Ambassador Rabat, my counterpart in Panama, which I met here in India, and I hope to meet him over there in Panama. And my friends and of the distinguished panel, Munish, Surab, and Mr. Alok Kumar in Costa Rica. Thank you all for being here. Your presence marks the value of hospitality that this great country in trying in its essence. Namaste. I have had a career that made me travel all my life. As, a, as the ambassador, it is one of my high points in my career. This looks like a culmination of all the years of traveling and learning, and India has already grown in me and taught me many things. As a Costa Rican, I feel that we share common values that arise from historical events that have marked both of our countries. In this occasion of the celebration of the independence of Costa Rica, let me give you a brief summary of those historical periods that led to our independence and other few historical events that are the cornerstones of what Costa Rica is today. The independence movements in Latin America from the Spanish crown were inspired by the American Revolution the French Revolution, the Napoleon, Napoleonic Wars, and the Cortes of Cadiz, then and 1812, where a liberal constitution of Spain was also drafted. Many independent movements in the provinces of Central America erupted during those period, but were suppressed by the Spanish army base in the captaincy of General of Guatemala. Having Mexico gain its independence through a process of battles that shared that started, I'm sorry, on the 16th of September of 1810 until the 24th of August, when Spain recognized its independence. The Central American independence came on the 15th of September of 1821, after the Mexican independence, and became part of the new Mexican empire for a short period of two years until the Republicans overthrew Iturbide as the emperor of Mexico. At that time, the Central American provinces constituted themselves into the Central American Federation, being recognized as states and having a chief governor that had lasted until 1838. Raulio Carrillo, who came to power in Costa Rica in a second term in a coup d'etat, consolidated the Costa Rica, put an end to Costa Rican participation of the Federation and centralized the army in the capital of San Jose structured the political division of the country in five provinces and established an educational and judicial system, making him known as the architect of the Costa Rican state. It wasn't during the presidency of Castro Madrid that a national constitution was approved where Costa Rica was declared officially a republic and established a national day of independence, the 15th of September. However, let me say that the act and the letter of independence reached Costa Rica until the 13th of October. But we still keep the 15th of September as our national day. The other major event that complements our independence is the centralization of power during the presidency of Juan Rafael Moras Porras, who is considered the father of the nation, having repealed by force in 1856 and 1857, the invasion of William Walker, who attempted to establish a slavery system as one in the south of the United States. This armed war against the invaders gave the independence process a sense of nationality and respect to our national identity. The elections of 1889, Costa Rica has had continuous elections every four years with the exception of when another 
interrupted briefly the democratic process. By 1940, a medical doctor, Calderon Guardia, came to who led from social reforms by founding the University of Costa Rica and the Social Security System of Health and Pension Funds in 1941. Alliance with the Communist Party, the Labor Code was created in 1943. In 1944, a candidate of this coalition in power backed by the party in government, the Communist Party and the Catholic Church was elected and who consolidated the reforms of Calderon Ward. However, the new economic growth backed, backed by political opposition to government and sectors that claim more political power had opposed the government for some time related to the position of Costa Rica in the Second World War. Let me tell you an anecdote about this. Costa Rica was the first to declare war to the Nazi Germany before it was. That was because they knew that the United States would be the Otherwise, can you imagine we would be talking German by now? <laughs> Besides the opposition claim that there was a fraud in the elections of 1944, not recognizing President Picado as the winner. And the same in the elections of 1948, where the fraud was more evident. And this was the spark that started a civil war between the government and the opposition groups led by Jose Figueres Ferrer. A social. The latter finally won the war, installing a board of government for six months in 1949, who approved a new constitution, gave the right to vote to women, abolished the army, and restructured the state. All the social reforms were maintained, and moreover, a tax was imposed to the banana multinationals. The banking system was nationalized, and a new electoral tribunal was established to prevent electoral frauds. Since then, Costa Rica has had clean elections and has fortified its democratic institutions. Since my role as the ambassador of Costa Rica, to my disbelief, I have found Costa Rica has been talked about more than I expected here in India. It may be due to the fear of climate change with the advent of the internet and its accomplishment of not having an army and being a champion of the earth which makes us very proud. It also got international prominence as being the happiest country in the world. Then by qualifying to football World Cup and now as being the primary frontliner in the fight against climate change. However, I feel from the few things Costa Rica can be a role model for the world is that we are firm and serious about the, our commitment towards democracy and peace which has been the underlying inspiration for many of our subsequent actions. Be it abolishing the army, focus on education and healthcare, being the only renewable energy in 98%. These actions stem from the democratic values which have acted as vanguard between us and all the turmoil which has been in our vicinity that we contributed to pacify and which was recognized by the Nobel Peace Prize awarded to our president, Oscar Arias, in 1987, as the ambassador has said. Many of the things we advocate are being done in India as well, and that is what makes me feel at home or connected with India. India's commitment to renewable energy and by being a leader by founding the International Solar Alliance. India's leadership movement, a brainchild of Pandit Nehru, and now enhancing the support through South South Operation under the stewardship of Prime Minister Modi. India's role and support to the United Nations in peacekeeping operations in Africa and even in Latin America has been commendable, and therefore we support India's enhanced role in the Security Council. Because during the time of need, India has been a friend of the world. Even now, during the time of pandemic, one nation being the farmer's role is India. Within a month or so, most of the countries of the world had also the high tech program is
was far and wide. But under peace, India's unity, freedom, democracy, and transparency. That is what binds us together. I always say India is the biggest democracy, and Costa Rica is the oldest democracy in Latin America. This is something big share in common. There's a big deal of interest in young history and cultural heritage, yoga, and Ayurveda in Costa Rica. And India, I'm sure, would be very interested in knowing more of Costa Rican culture and art. That's why I feel that much more should be done in exchanging scholars and artists between both countries. And of course, points of our agenda here to increase it among India people and Costa Rican uh, tourists. We also understand that we may not feature on top of India's priority of policy engagement. However, I would like to draw your attention not to the quantity of the close to 500 persons maybe, but to the quality as nations we have and the potential to deepen our relations. Within a few years after the internet revolution, we became known as the Silicon Valley of Central America. Indian IT giants, Wipro, Infosys, Cognizant, and non-IT companies as well as Indra, Baja, my friends, George Mahut company, Aleti are all running I would encourage more Indian companies to engage with Costa Rica. And fortunately, within a year of my presence, I have received innumerable letters of interest from several Indian companies of all types. However, my, my vision of, for Indian Costa Rican relationship is not only on trade and commerce. It's about teaching the values of Gandhi. Learn from India's frugal innovation embedded in the young Indian's entrepreneurial DNA and the Indian willingness to learn science, technology, engineering, biotechnology, and economics, among many other areas of common interest. How Indians have become the raison d'etre debt of the Silicon Valley in the US is inspiring to me and much more. Finally, thank all of you for being friends of Costa Rica. This year also marks a decade of our embassy in India. I've surely come along 50 years of diplomatic relations. I would love to see an Indian embassy in Costa Rica and hopefully under Prime Minister Modi's visionary foreign policy. I'm positive it will happen soon. We have a profoundly well-informed line up who will add more substance to this convention. Thank you. Once again, looking forward to hearing from you all and thank you very much for listening. Over to Dr. Aprajita. Thank you, Ambassador. It was a pleasure to listen to your uh, a synopted historical overview of the formation of your nation. And as a student of Latin American studies, I could see points of convergence between Costa Rica and other countries of the region, as well as the points of conversion that you highlighted with India, especially on the issues of rene renewable energy, solar energy, NAM, South-South cooperation, and the basic thrust of India and, and Costa Rica of democracy and peace. Thank you so much, sir. Now, may I request uh, the speakers, and I will begin with Mr. George Muthut. Mr. George Muthut, he is the Managing Director, Muthut Leisure and Hospitality of the Muthut Group. Mr. George Muthut is, an, uh, is part of a long line of entrepreneurs of the Muthut Group. He has uh, varied interests in diversified fields such as financial services, healthcare, hospitality, agriculture, housing, and education. He has a bachelor's degree in hospitality management from the prestigious Welcome Group Graduate School of Hotel Administration at Manipal. And he has worked in a number of other institutions. And finally, he pursued his master's degree from the S.E. Cornell University in Paris. He has also been awarded the Distinguished Alumni Award of the Manipal University in 2015 and ITC Chairman's Award for his contribution to the field of hospitality. May I now welcome Mr. Muthut, your 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 uh, work, sir, your words, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Aparijita. I hope I'm uh, I'm actually audible to everybody. And yes, uh, yes. first, I'd like to say thank you very much. I'm privileged to be here, especially with. Uh, uh, you know, Ambassador Claudio Alcadena and uh, 
Nice to meet you, sir, once again. And uh, yes, we must share that wine on the beaches of Costa Rica or maybe the beaches of Kerala. I'd also like to acknowledge Ambassador Upendra Singh Rawat as well, Ambassador Bangar, uh, and all the uh, people from Costa Rica, from the Costa Rican Indian Association, and of course, the Asochim team as well. Now, uh, my relationship with Costa Rica actually goes back to 2013 that we made our first investment. And uh, you will actually have to excuse me for what I'm wearing right now. For those who are aware of uh, Costa Rica's love for football, I must tell you that this is my favorite team. This is basically La Liga and it's from Alajuela. So I thought it is appropriate on this wonderful day when we are celebrating the birthday of uh, Costa Rica, the 199th Independence Day, I should wear at least the T-shirt of La Liga. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Clarence Serena. And I think, uh, I don't know if you support the same team or you're uh, with somebody else. Yes, I, I knew there's rivalry there. I could see that. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're, you're on mute, so I can't hear which team you're supporting. Uh, yeah, no, you can. Heredia, Heredia. Heredia, of course. I, I, I knew it was going to come up. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the thing that I would like to point out is that my experience uh, as an investor, as a person who is actually invested in Costa Rica, especially in the tourism and the wellness this thing, has been fantastic over the last seven years. And I think the growing association with Costa Rica has brought about a greater partnership and a greater willingness from from not just from me, but my company as well, to invest more in Costa Rica. If you ask me, and if I were to actually compare Costa Rica with uh, the possibilities, I would say Costa Rica is like the Singapore of Latin America. I think it is the country where most companies would love to invest, where I think it's a starting point from where you can expand into the rest of Latin America as well. Costa Rica lends itself, like everybody has already said, they've already talked about the history of Costa Rica, they've already talked about the benefits of being in Costa Rica, so I'm not going to repeat all of that, but I'm only going to talk about my own experiences and what I see as a future possibility in terms of increasing the partnership between India and Costa Rica, specifically in the, in the area of tourism. And I believe when it comes to wellness and tourism, Costa Rica has always been on the forefront, and I believe India has a lot to offer in that way. When somebody had already mentioned everything from yoga and Ayurveda, I come from Cochin. I'm right now talking to you from Cochin, which is the homeland of Ayurveda. And I believe introducing Ayurveda into Costa Rica is another feather in the Costa Rican cap in trying to bring about wellness uh, into the country. Of course, uh, because of COVID, I cannot visit Costa Rica right now, but I would love to be there during this time. But going forward, I think the association with Costa Rica uh, for Indian companies is not just limited as far as tourism is concerned. Because Costa Rica, I believe, has a very young population, very highly educated population, and specifically in the area of technology, in the area of education, and also industry, I think Costa Rica and India have this great partnership. For, for, for some reason, I have not seen the realization of it. We've had a partnership for a long time, but I feel that it's now time to take it to the next level in terms of bringing a closer partnership between India and Costa Rica. For that, uh, I always say that uh, at least when it comes to bringing tourism into Costa Rica from this side of the world, uh, and I can be bold enough to say a few things in terms of increasing the partnership, I would say, why not offer visa-free travel for Indians coming to Costa Rica, that, or at least visa on arrival, so that Costa Rica and the Indian partnership can actually increase on that forefront. I also feel that there is a lot of association that can also be made in terms of education and in terms of human resource as well, because bringing in the right talent into Costa Rica can also increase uh, the potential for Costa Rica as a country. I also remember being there when Ambassador Rawat was also there uh, when he talked to us, and I thought his talk and his vision was fantastic. I just felt that you know, the partnership is getting stronger, warmer, and I thought the love and friendliness between India and Costa Rica is going towards uh, the next level. I did suggest something uh, to Ambassador Rawat, and he said that he will 
give it serious consideration. And I think this is for both governments as well, and I might be bold enough to actually put that forward as well, is the idea of investments from uh, India into Costa Rica. And if those investments were to come through, the uh, the one of the few challenges that are faced is that area of double taxation. And I think if both countries can come together, uh, both governments can come together and address this issue of double taxation in terms of income earned within Costa Rica and then ex, uh, you know, ex, uh, and brought back to India, how, how the taxation rules on that can be improved. I leave it to both governments to discuss, but I believe that once it's solved, can actually bring in a closer association and bring in more investment into Costa Rica from this side of the world. And before I end, I would also like to point out one interesting, among so many interesting learnings that I've already had in Costa Rica. One of the things that I, uh, what I really, really admire and I like, and it's a fantastic concept, is that of uh, country origin brands. Now, Costa Rica has branding for companies that represent everything that Costa Rica stands for whether it be for sustainability, whether it be for human resource in terms of the investment, in terms of the excellence, in terms of innovation, social progress. And to, to name it all, the brand is called Essential Costa Rica. So companies that are actually branded Essential Costa Rica represent the, the best of Costa Rica. And I believe that brings in more investment into the country and makes the country more competitive. I believe the same could be uh, you know, uh, implemented in India, where companies in India recognized for their work in sustainability, for their excellence in innovation and social progress, could be branded in the same way and then showcase both sides of the competitiveness of both countries and bring in that kind of association where people find it easier to partner with companies that are branded in such a way. So the idea of essential Costa Rica, uh, I'm sure people from Costa Rica already understand that. And I'm proud to say that Zandari today, even though we are the only Indian company which has invested in tourism, we are branded essential Costa Rica right now because we stand for the values of Costa Rica. We stand for the excellence of Costa Rica. We stand for the innovation that Costa Rica stands for. In the same way, I believe that as, as the Muthud group, we, we stand for the excellence of India. We, stands, we stand for the innovation of India. We stand for the people of India as well. And if the Indian government would find that kind of um, you know, branding that could be given to companies like ours, it would help in the association and help in cross-border investments and make it much simpler and easier. And I think that's what I wanted to say. I, uh, once again, would like to congratulate all Costa Ricans on this lovely Independence Day, 199 years. And hopefully when next year, when we don't have COVID, we, we would be seeing the 200th year celebration, which would be fantastic. And yes, Ambassador and Sorena, I would love to have that glass of wine with you on the beaches of Costa Rica to celebrate the 200th year. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. George. That was just really good. And I wanted to tell you, not only in Kerala and Costa Rica, there is football. Also in Goa, where I'm sitting, is, is a great <laughs> hub of football. So I, I just wanted to say that uh, your, your, your talk was actually a great example of real investment by Indian entrepreneur in Costa Rica. I'm sure that your experiences as an entrepreneur, as an as an initiator within Costa Rica, would would, would set the set the, the path for many others who would be happy to go and 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 invest in Costa Rica. And and your talk about double taxation, I think that could be something which could be eased to to encourage people from Indian investors to go into Costa Rica. Thank you so much for your to your words. Thank you very much. I have the next speaker with me, Mr. Saurabh Dasgupta. He is the president of Costa Rica India Association and he's the operations manager Hewlett Packard uh, Enterprise in Costa Rica. A little bit about Mr. Saurabh Dasgupta. Uh, he uh, he is, has created what is known as the Kriya, Kriya 
that is Costa Rica India Association, CRIA, CRIA uh, uh, along with his team, they maintain, maintain uh, intercultural bond between India and Costa Rica. They celebrate all the key festivals of India, like Holi Diwali, and also collaborate with the Indian community on Independence and Republic Day. And as well as well as with the Indian Embassy, Indian Embassy to organize internal yoga uh, yoga day as and Diwali and Holi are the two biggest festivals that is that is celebrated by Kriya. Uh, as I already mentioned to you, he is uh, he works with the Hewlett Packard Enterprise in Costa Rica, and he is a supply chain logistic and manage and manages teams there in Costa Rica. Welcome, Mr. Das Gupta. Thank you, Dr. Parajita. Um, Honorable His Excellency, Mr. Upinder Singh Rawat, Ambassador of India to Costa Rica, Panama and Nicaragua, and uh, Senor uh, Claudio Ansoreno, Ambassador of Costa Rica to India, um, respected uh, diplomats, delegates, and panelists from different fields of industry and commerce, um, and my dear friends. Um, today is a special occasion, you know, as Costa Rica, the, the country of Pura Vida, celebrates uh, its uh, 199th year of independence. Um, Costa Rica has demonstrated to the world how a country with just a population of 5 million can achieve great success on its own terms, be it in the field of uh, renewable energy, climate change, or simply being the happiest country in the world, a paradise for peace and biodiversity. Uh, Costa Rica is a country of many, many accolades. On behalf of the Indian community in Costa Rica, I congratulate the people of this country for showing the way to the world, the true way of living. Pura Vida or Pure Life um, as the phrase that describes the culture of Costa Rica. The Indian community in Costa Rica is, is a very small group, but a very vibrant group of professionals. Um, there are around 400 plus Indians um, and Indian families you know, who've made this beautiful country as their home. A uh, majority of the people uh, belong to the IT sector working on short term or long term projects. Uh, but I am the current president of the Indian Association in Costa Rica, or popularly known as CRIA, which is Costa Rica India Association. Um, and I have a group of uh, you know, six active more board members who, along with me, help me to take care of this organization. Uh, a quick history or background about CRIA. Uh, CRIA was set up uh, a decade back in the year 2010 uh, to support the Indians in Costa Rica, as well as to enjoy and share a culture with the people here. Uh, Mr. Munish Manchinda, one of our panelists today's discussion, along with the, some of the other key community members were the driving force to set up CRIA as the founding members. Over the years, uh, CRIA has gained popularity among the locals for our festivals like Holi and Diwali to, to celebrating the Indian Independence Day uh, with the, the you know, typical concept of the Indian food, uh, Indian food Festival. We have a very active social media presence and anybody, right, anybody who would like to understand the India and Costa Rica relationship should feel free to connect with us. Uh, we have often been the stepping stone for a lot of Indian companies and Indians as they set their foot in Costa Rica. The Indian diaspora in Costa Rica is expanding. Right. While there are no official figures available, uh, but we do believe it is this expansion could be anywhere uh, in between the rate of five to ten percent. Uh, we receive at least, on an average, four to five queries on every month uh, for Indians who are planning to relocate to Costa Rica for work or for business needs. This is very good, right? Since uh, good news, since as Indians. Uh, we have always given back um, to the local community and to the economy of this country. Right? Um, it's not just an Indian who moves here, right? It's the family also moves in here. And, you know, uh, I'm sure you all will agree that when we as Indians move, our food, our culture, and a lot of things move along with us, which helps in the overall growth uh, where we are moving in this case. Our primary goal is to bond both the cultures and facilitate a smooth transition for an Indian family in this case. Since last year, we have partnered with uh, the famous Indian Hispanic Language Academy in Kolkata to offer online Spanish classes at very reasonable prices. I'm very happy to share that you know this initiative has received a very positive response from the Indian community, and we have started recommending families to take up these classes before they even move to Costa Rica. Uh, familiarity with the language is one of the first requirements for any such big movement, uh, and that is something which we have realized over the years. We also have an active WhatsApp group with every possible Indian here, 
Uh, and this platform is uh, frequently utilized for all critical communication and notifications so that we remain connected, bonded for any major news or updates in this case. Especially during this COVID time, this has been extremely useful as we keep on sharing you know, uh, important updates with our families here. CREA also provide different platforms on a monthly basis to allow families and individuals to interact and make new friends. We organize cultural festivals, as Dr. Parajita mentioned, and um, celebrate our Independence Day and Republic Day, support our International Yoga Day celebration, sports day, picnics with our members, etc. Uh, in, in, in short, you know, we are the binding force for, uh, for people who are moving here in Costa Rica. CREA also acts on behalf of the Embassy of India for any uh, need or any requirement within Costa Rica since the embassy is not physically located here. To summarize and to conclude, uh, CREA should be one of one's go-to organization when it comes to do anything between India and Costa Rica. We help business and people connect with each other and support them during this journey to make it a smooth transition. One of the challenging areas has been to procure um, a Costa Rica visa as soon as possible due to the stringent uh, documentation and the immigration requirement. We certainly believe if this area could be simplified, we can foster an environment of business agility and increase revenue for Costa Rica in areas of tourism. I thank the panel of Asocham for providing me this opportunity and platform to share about CREA and our goals. And we're always there to um, help and assist anyone as, as need arises. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And Costa Rica, especially Pura Vida. I mean, I, I was very interested in, to hear about uh, your experiences in Costa Rica as part of Priya because uh, as a student of also diaspora studies, I have a great deal of interest in diaspora. And uh, also the fact that you are reinventing diaspora because 150 years, 170 years ago, Indians went to the region. And again, Indians are going to the region with different expectations, with different hopes. And it's great to know that you provide such an excellent support system for the Indians who are arriving there in Costa Rica. Thank you so much. The next speaker that I have with me today is Mr. Munish Manchanda. Mr. Manchanda is a financial professional who has been who has devoted his life to promoting social impactful leadership throughout his career. He's graduated from Delhi University uh, with, with a bachelor's in commerce. He holds a CPA from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, an executive business administration and management graduate from the University of Washington. Is also the founder of uh, Costa Rica India Association and the director of the Costa Rican American Chamber of Commerce in Costa Rica. Welcome, Mr. Manchanda. The lot, uh, Mrs. Gangopathy, it's a pleasure to be here with with all of you. I first want to really appreciate this initiative from AM, you know, SSTM as well as the Embassy of Costa Rica. And, uh, and uh, congratulations to His Excellency, Mr. Ambassador Ansoreno, as well as the retired Ambassador, Mr. Banger, as well as Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Rawat, and fellow fellow panelists and colleagues and friends of India. I see a couple of people, close to 140 people joining us. So very, very, very nice, uh, I would say, attendance here of people who have interest in doing business uh, with Costa Rica or plans to move here. Uh, que viva Costa Rica, 199 años de independencia, es, es un día muy, muy, muy bonito para, para Costa Rica y muy orgulloso, muy orgulloso. Uh, I'm going to switch to, to English. Uh, so I moved to Costa Rica, I want to share my journey in Costa Rica. In fact, I came in to set up the first Indian Costa Rican joint venture in the year 2002, uh, when I used to basically head the finance uh, team for Max India, which is one of the healthcare companies, as you might know, which owns hospitals and insurance companies in India. And uh, Costa Rica at that point of time was the only country outside of United States of America to basically have a US FDA approved uh, research center uh, that used to do research into new medication. And it was very interesting that in the year 2001, when we started looking at companies and countries who have this kind of interesting profiles, uh, Costa Rica was the gem in, in the research sector in the year 2001, which is almost 20 years back. 
And that's how I really moved into Costa Rica, uh, set up the operations for LATAM in different countries uh, for the company. And later on, you know, due to some changes legislations that Costa Rica had, uh, you know, we, we decided to basically concentrate in other countries. And I uh, basically ventured out into services sector, which is one of the four, four most, I would say, most important sectors in, in Costa Rica. Want to share some key facts about Costa Rica that uh, you know, the different um, panelists have already shared. But Costa Rica spends 8% of its GDP on its education, which is key. And that really brings in a very strong talent pool of the country. Today, Costa Rica boasts of close to 20% of its GDP coming in from the services sector. Costa Rica used to be an agriculture-based economy. And over the last 30 years, especially after the 1980s, when we had a huge devaluation happening, Costa Rica started looking into, with, through, the, through its government, looking into different forms of reinventing the economy. And I'm very proud to say that Costa Rica today, a couple of big achievements that it has, it's the number one country, destination country, for having a shared service sectors in Latin America. It's in the top two countries outside of United States of America, which boasts of a medical technology hub, which is also considered to be the biggest med tech hub outside of outside of US, which employs close to 30,000 people, generating close to $3 billion of exports. Costa Rica has got services sector, which boasts of top Fortune 500 companies, including the company that I work for, Amazon. Uh, we have who's who of the Fortune 500 companies who have set up their operations in Costa Rica, providing services not only from back office, but also from finance, accounting, compliance, human resources. We have companies offering advanced manufacturing. We have companies offering light manufacturing. Costa Rica hosts one of the most famous plasma engine laboratories of the world, which was done by a Costa Rican astronaut. Franklin, Dr. Franklin Chang, and, and really is very high on innovation and, and research. It is very imperative that, you know, Costa Rica offers a host of opportunities, not only from the education system, it has got a very good healthcare system. It is a very peaceful and loving country, but one of the foremost things that a person really likes when you come in Costa Rica, you feel welcomed. Not every country in the world helps you to feel welcomed as a foreigner when you go and want to immigrate to that country. From day one, I'm very proud to say my children were born here. I've been here now almost 20 years. And I'm very proud to say that never once you feel as an outsider in Costa Rica. In fact, Costa Ricans treat you much more better than a Costa Rican when they see that you are an outsider. They are trying to help you. They are trying to ensure that they are trying to help you set up your businesses. They're trying to ensure that there are opportunities for you to set down as a family. Costa Rican boast of a couple of important, uh, I would say, single promotion windows. So we have a couple of organizations that have, I've worked very closely with, which are part of the government and some being non-profitable organizations called Procomer and Sinde. If you are here to set up some business operations in Costa Rica, we have a special regime called Free Trade Zone Benefit, and my dear friend George did allude to that, and so did Ambassador Ansarano. It's very important that the companies who come in and set up investments, and you don't need a lot of investment, there's a minimum number of employees that you need to pull in. We have a special regime called Free Trade Zone, under which the taxation of the companies are basically reduced to zero. There are zero taxation rules for companies who are investing into Free Trade Zone benefits for a couple of years, and then you, you continue to have those rights if you keep investing more in that country in terms of labor or in terms of fixed assets of, or investments that can happen. I would, I'm also very glad to share that Costa Rica, apart from being a medtech hub, is also a hub for services sector. In services sector, we have close to 70,000 people working in different sectors in different companies here. I just mentioned some of them. But Costa Rica also offers a host of opportunities in agriculture, agri-tech, as well as infrastructure. Costa Rica is right now on a plan of having massive infrastructure investments into roads, into railways, into bridges. Costa Rica hosts two of the important ports in the region that really helps you to transit time from, from shipping goods to the United States from anywhere from Asia, which is around 30 days, 10 to 12 days. And it has got ports in the Atlantic as well as the Pacific. 
just inaugurated one of the biggest uh, foreign investments into Costa Rica, the Atlantic side called the Port of Moin, which is one of the world's, world's best facilities to really have fast maritime movement of, of goods. Costa Rica also hosts 14 bilateral free trade agreements between the different countries and regions across the world that really helps us country, companies to set up shop and help really export. I would, I would like to basically add saying, Costa Rica has got, is one of the oldest democracies in the Latin American region. And really you can find that government here as well as private institutions, they don't have any, any uh, they're easy to access. Uh, it's very easy to access the government institutions here. They're very open to hear your feedback. They're very open to look into, they work with us with the different chambers of commerce. And I also represent the Costa Rican American Chamber of Commerce on which board I've been there for almost 10 years. And I also been the founder president of CREA. It's been very important for us that the kind of ties that we've been able to form with the government and the private sector has been formidable. And that has been formidable for us to get more investment in the countries, in the different sectors, where the government really provides a single window of clearance to help the companies to come and invest, help the companies to come and form and part of these special trade zones, of free trade zone regimes, take the benefits of taxation and other benefits that, that come as part of it, but there's a single clearance window available that will really encourage companies to come and set up shop. Costa Rica right now, in the middle of pandemia, I would say host a lot of opportunities for Indian companies and even vice versa of Costa Rican companies to go and set up in India their operations. Because this is a near shore destination. We are very close to the United States with flight times not more than four to six hours from Atlanta or New York, which is very convenient. And also being in the same time zone really helps customers to give a different experience. We have people speaking more than two languages across the board. So I would like to, to really end up saying, you know, if you're looking to set up operations in Latin America, whether planning to move and set up, uh, you know, uh, something in any industry, tourism, hotel, Ayurveda, I think uh, George alluded to that. I think Costa Rica is the destination for Latin America, where you have a very nice culture. You have a very literate population, close to 98% of literacy rate, a young population of around 35%, around 2 million people who are in the age group of 15 to 35 years and very experienced in the new service center, uh, shared services uh, being being one of the big hubs. So with that said, uh, that's what I want to share. And thanks a lot to the SHM team and the embassy of uh, Costa Rica, as well as the ambassador of, of India and other panelists, and Mr. Hiranandani, the president of ASHM, for offering this opportunity to share the experience. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manchinda, uh, for providing us with this synoptic view of Costa Rican economy, society. In fact, your emphasis on, on health tourism, service sector, infrastructure, innovation and research. And finally, I think what interested me most was the fact that your emphasis on education. I think that is the key to development. I think a small state like Costa Rica, a small country like Costa Rica could develop so much because of the emphasis on education. So I think that 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 could be a very, very apt pointer for us in India that we need to invest in education more. And only then can we, you know, have a society which is so equal in terms of uh, education, in terms of all, you know, development. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I now have with me Mr. Alok Kumar. He is sub-regional head of Central America and the Caribbean of UPL Limited. He is based in Costa Rica. Mr. Alok Kumar is an agronomist and an MBA in marketing and international business from India. Uh, he is uh, base, he was based in Europe, Colombia, and Hong Kong, uh, handling different profiles of agriculture industry during his last assignments. Now, may I welcome Mr. Alok Kumar? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parajita. Uh, very good evening, uh, uh, Mr. Claudio. Uh, uh, very good uh, morning, uh, Mr. Robert. Uh, good evening, Mr. Banger. Very good evening to Mr. Hiranandani uh, and all my panelists, uh, guests, uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I'm going to basically talk about agriculture. Agriculture is, uh, as uh, Manish and a lot of people have mentioned, is an essential sector, and UPL is into the field of agriculture. 
I, I shifted to Costa Rica almost like two years ago when UPL decided to buy a local company known as Industria Biochem Corporation. And at that time, I was passing through a triple integration because before this acquisition, UPL had buy a very big global company known as Arista Life Sciences. So my main job was to come and settle this triple integration. And Costa Rica has really launched a very big platform for UPL. Uh, positioning UPL as number one company in uh, Central America today. We are by far a very strong player today in the field of agriculture. And uh, a lot of people do know that the two crops, which stands uh, very big for Costa Rican exports, one is banana and the second is pineapple. We always forget about uh, pineapple, but pineapple is today the biggest export agricultural crop in, uh, in Costa Rica, even suppressed banana in terms of turnovers. Uh, coffee is always very, very well known. Uh, the Costa Rican coffee, very well marketed all across. You can see the bridge shop. Uh, most of the coffee which are sold are the, are the Costa Rican coffee. So it is, uh, it is a very uh, important uh, export destination for uh, uh, banana, pineapples, and coffee. Lots of these pineapples are exported to Europe, not even to US because of the trade and uh, facilities which European U Union is giving to giving to Costa Rica in terms of exporting the, the, these crops. Uh, amazing uh, thing is that there are nine Indian restaurants in Costa Rica. You can see that, you know, place like Bogota, place like Buenos Aires, where there are only one or two restaurants, and even you have to drive 30 kilometers to find an Indian restaurant. If within a distance of four to five kilometers, you can find an Indian restaurant. It seems that the people here, the local people really love what we call the salsa, the, the tomato sauce which, uh, uh, with uh, uh, chicken and all those things. So it's a very, very popular getting food, and uh, people love to come and uh, they are they're really enjoying the hospitality of these Indian restaurants given uh, by a lot of uh, local Indian entrepreneurs. So that's one of the good things uh, which is happening. UPL's approach is not only the big farms. UPL approach is to how we can go and help the local agriculture. This is what it is very, very important for UPL. Today, we are reaching to the smallest of the banana farm and trying to help them to export their banana to Europe and, and to USA. This is our, our, our vision, our mission, the sustainability. As you might have seen, UPL has signed a global pact with FIFA for sustainability of agriculture for the next 15 years. So a lot of changes happening. We have established a team of over 15 people and they are working in Guapilis area up to Sarafiki and all those areas where banana is grown to go and help those small farms, which has less than 50 hectares of banana in the technical aspect for the control of disease and all the aspects to make sure that all the technical services are provided by the UPL to make sure that their banana can be exported to the, to, to the, to the export countries and they get the right value for it. After the acquisition of Industria Biochem Corporation, we have over 200 employees today working in Costa Rica, and we already talked about the level of education and everything. So it's a very practical that UPL is uh, here to help the agriculture, to help, and we are, you know, we are a very aggressive Indian company. So in days to come, we are going to take advantage of what other panelists have just said that Costa Rica is offering us. Uh, uh, free trade zone, so UPL is registering ourselves, and we are going to make Costa Rica as an export hub to all the Central American countries. So we can see that we have a very big plan, and uh, uh, we are going to keep investing in Costa Rica, and uh, with the help of agriculture and the technology service providing, we are going to really look into expansion mode into, into different parts of Central America. Coming back to soccer, George, uh, you know, we have to uh, go out of Alavela. Alavela, Saprisa, Iredia, these are the best, best teams, but we have to promote other teams. So UPL in the last three years is already sponsoring San Carlos as a team. And 
and uh, San, San Carlos was a winner, you know, San Carlos was a winner two seasons ago. And our vision is that we keep promoting soccer to the deeply rooted teams in banana area and the pineapple area so that the more competition arises into, into the country. Uh, one more thing, last thing, a lot of panelists have spoken about um, visa free or on arrival visa. I would like to advocate that by saying to the honorable uh, uh, ambassador that, you know, for us, learning Spanish is a bit more easier compared to learning any other Indian languages. Even the four is South Indian languages, I can't believe that I can learn in this life. But Spanish, I can really learn because at least you can write Spanish like an English. So that's what uh, makes it uh, extremely important for us. So if that happens, it will definitely promote uh, much more penetration of the Indian companies coming to Costa Rica and vice versa. Thank you very much uh, for the SOCAM and uh, all the members for inviting me as a, as a, as a speaker. And we are here uh, to help as much as we can in all the aspects to both the countries. Thank you, Dr. Prajit. Thank you so much, Mr. Alok Kumar. That was very, very interesting as, you know, uh, as, as a student of Latin American studies and also Central America, we have always uh, studied about the importance of agriculture for these societies and the kind of politics that was associated with agriculture for a very long time. But uh, there is no doubt that the, the, the products, the agriculture products are of great value and also they have great demand as you talked about coffee and, and, and others, as well as fruits, I remember, and bananas, of course, the fact that they're pineapples, they have great demand and they have great appreciation throughout the world. There is no doubt about that. I would also like to join you and others in asking the ambassador of Costa Rica, as well as the Indian ambassador in, in Panama for Costa Rica, that the idea of free visa is a great incentive to both study and as well as do business in these countries. So that would be a great idea if, if something like that could be done, because for uh, even scholars and students are really, really encouraged when, when they don't have to go through this rigorous uh, visa thing and payment of visa fees. So that would be a great incentive for even researchers and students who, are, who, who would like to study Costa Rica, as well as, of course, uh, businessmen who would like to go and do fine, uh, you know, ventures and initiatives in Costa Rica or vice versa in India. The last speaker now I have, thank you. Uh, the last speaker I have now with me is His Excellency Mr. Upendra Singh Rawat. Mr. Mr. Rawat is India's ambassador to Costa Rica. Mr. Rawat, Mr. Upendra Singh Rawat is a career foreign services officer. Officer, he joined the foreign service in 1998. Prior to that, he graduated out of the Indian Institute of Technology in Kanpur, and he was uh, prior, and after that, he was for the government of India. Before joining the government of India, he was a physics instructor. He has uh, been at var in various capacities in various countries around the world. He has been to he has, was part of the Indian mission in Buenos Aires, in Slovakia, in UK, and Mexico. He was the deputy chief of mission in the Indian embassy in the Republic of Korea. Prior to his arrival as ambassador of India to Panama, he was the joint secretary in charge of e-governance and information technology, as well as cyber diplomacy divisions of the Minister of External Affairs, New Delhi. May I welcome Mr. Rawat to give his keynote address. Uh, thank you, um, Dr. Gangopadhyay. Uh, uh, his Excellency Mr. Claudio Ansorian, Ambassador of Costa Rica to India. Uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Ravi Bangar, former Ambassador of India to Colum Colombia and Equator. Dr. Aparajita Gangopade, Professor International Relations and Director Center for Latin American Studies, Goa University. Mr. George Muthut, MD Muthut Leisure and Hospitality. Mr. Munis Manchanda, Site Leader, Amazon Costa Rica. Mr. Saurabh Das Gupta, President, Kriya and Operations Manager, HP Enterprises Costa Rica. Mr. Alu Kumar, Regional Head and Central American Caribbean, UPA Limited. Uh, first of all, let me uh, congratulate to uh, uh, Ambassador Ansorena and uh, all uh, Costa Ricans for their 199th uh, uh, Independence Day. And also thank uh, Asocham and uh, uh, its uh, president, uh, Mr. Dr. Hira Nandani for uh, uh, his welcome remarks and for organizing uh, this event. 
we have uh, all our uh, fellow panelists and speakers. They have covered uh, various subjects going to, for the history of Costa Rica, the trade and cultural and tourist relations uh, between the two countries, and also uh, the um, Indian uh, persons or Indian companies in Costa Rica. Uh, there is some uh, Costa Rican persons in India also, but uh, we would like to see uh, more of it. Uh, we uh, there is uh, there is uh, as it was mentioned earlier also our on, honorable vice president uh, and I do visited uh, Costa Rica last year and that was uh, an important development for the uh, uh, for the bilateral relations and uh, uh, this also helped uh, to provide more uh, more profile and more focus for us and the government of India to for its relationship with Costa Rica and also the uh, relationship with the countries in Central America as uh, as we as has been mentioned earlier uh, Central American region is uh, is a region which has uh, uh, many different uh, uh, smaller countries and uh, it's a region which links uh, basically small uh, thin uh, land uh, peninsular land which connects north america geographically with uh, south america and uh, and because of its uh, <clears throat> location and uh, and be, being both both the, uh, both the two of to the two of the largest oceans in, in the world pacific and uh, atlantic ocean coming together just a gap of 50 100 kilometers uh, and where i am sitting in panama panama canal here so it makes a, uh, the uh, um, this region as a logistic hub uh, of the uh, for the uh, entire uh, americas region and uh, with uh, costa rica's uh, strength in education technical base and uh, uh, good knowledge of English. Uh, it has been found very suitable. Uh, obviously, it has been found very suitable by Indian companies, not only in uh, IT sector, but in other areas and other kind of thing which brings us together, as has been noted earlier, is the um, Costa Rica's strength in uh, Meditech and India's own strength in pharmaceutical and medical industry with uh, 20% of the genetics in the world are produced in India, India being leader in vaccines. And so uh, we see a lot of, uh, not only in terms of possibility of import export, but also in terms of uh, investment possibilities between the two countries. Uh, unfortunately, the current bilateral trade that which is last year was about $176 million uh, is not, uh, does not reflect that reality, but I think uh, with the post pandemic world uh, focus changing and uh, um, India is also opening up its economy more uh, because of the um, uh, because of the changes required and uh, uh, and renewed interest on economic focus of the government. Uh, we will see uh, more of India's uh, uh, economic relation in the Latin American region as well. Uh, as Ambassador uh, Ansurena mentioned, our uh, Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program is uh, is uh, uh, is a very important uh, initiative and program of the uh, government of uh, India. We call it ITEC, and I'm very for uh, happy to announce that. Uh, just a few days ago, this ITAP logo uh, has been uh, registered by the uh, trade body in India. So it's a ITAC logo and program is now a registered trademark uh, in India. And uh, Costa Rica, we have um, 20, uh, 20 slots. And uh, uh, for the three countries that uh, I represent, uh, India, uh, we have always found the Costa Rican candidates are the most enthusiastic and the um, be, uh, most utilization of uh, ITEC slots. So uh, that also reflects that not only as, as my fellow panelists mentioned that Costa Rica is good in education, but in Costa Rica there is also a willingness to learn uh, new things. So uh, 
uh, we uh, I would not dwell go into the business uh, or um, Indian com uh, companies and business different areas or business which are more uh, 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 which provide more opportunity uh, because they have been already covered. But uh, the areas like uh, energy, including renewable energy, pharmaceutical, IT, infrastructure. Uh, for example, for Indian companies, there is opportunity uh, to invest in infrastructure uh, in uh, areas in Costa Rica. There are like uh, telecom sector. The, go the government of Costa Rica is uh, trying to expand uh, more and more uh, internet services and uh, broadband connectivity in the rural areas uh, in Costa Rica, like uh, in uh, certain parts in Himalayan region of India, is highly uh, what is called mountainous country and uh, with a uh, lot of rainfall, mountains, valleys, slope up and down. And in India, we have a lot of experience of uh, uh, establishing infrastructure including telecom infrastructure in such areas. So the Indian companies have experience as well as the technical expertise to contribute. Another area in infrastructure is like uh, uh, railway in uh, railway transportation, which the government of Costa Rica has uh, a significant plan to uh, to expand their network. So, uh, so the in, and plus the other areas that have been mentioned, we see that uh, there is uh, uh, opportunity also that uh, uh, government of our like uh, for uh, Indian companies, government of India offers uh, uh, there is an what we call uh, concessional financing scheme, which is started in 2015-16 and has been now uh, action, earlier it was around this time but it has been extended up to 2023 now and in this uh, the government of india supports indian companies and entities bidding for strategically important infrastructure projects abroad in terms of providing um, concessional uh, financing so uh, these are the things which uh, now will help in uh, uh, in making uh, investment uh, easier for uh, Indian companies, uh, these ideas about uh, DTA or some, uh, those are the things which the two governments have to consider. And those ideas may take uh, more time to come to uh, uh, fruit, uh, fruition. Uh, one another uh, thing which I wanted to uh, mention was uh, the, uh, as was mentioned earlier about the, uh, uh, Costa Rica having no army is one of the uh, uh, one of the happiest countries in the world and uh, a very peace loving country and that uh, brings in a lot of similarity with India. Uh, we have uh, uh, we uh, in India we call uh, Mahatma Gandhi as father of uh, the nation and. Uh, um, and linking with Costa Rica at this stage is specifically relevant for me because uh, in next few days uh, uh, we are on 2nd October on the birth anniversary of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. We are going to conclude uh, celebrations of 158th year of birth of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, the ceremony which started from his birth day last year and going to conclude this year. And in fact, uh, uh, Embassy of, uh, we have planned a uh, kind of uh, uh, online program uh, with uh, on 2nd October with uh, live streaming from our uh, Facebook channel in which uh, a renowned Gandhian Dr. Sobhana Radhakrishnan, uh, who, who is well known for her valuable contribution to literature, social service and spreading of the vision of Mahatma Gandhi. She is basically going to share about 50 minutes of her Gandhi Katha, which means the story of Gandhi, which is based on the popularity of oral narrative of the tradition of Katha, which includes, apart from the story, the reciting and hymns and songs, uh, uh, which reinforce the thoughts of Mahatma Gandhi. So I just thought I would mention it here uh, because uh, that is uh, very relevant with the, uh, the with the theme of peace and uh, and happiness that uh, we are we were uh, discussing here. 
So uh, in the uh, scenario, in the change scenario in the world now, when we have uh, COVID-19 has changed uh, things, uh, we feel that uh, we have already seen that uh, IT and IT services have become more important in this change scenario. And with the, uh, with the strength of two countries, India and Costa Rica in this field, uh, I feel that there, there is more opportunity for businesses in two countries. And also, India is a changed country. Uh, every day it is changing, but uh, the lot of new things have happened. Uh, India's uh, rank in the World Bank's ease of doing uh, business has improved to 63 uh, this year. Uh, FDI inflow in India was uh, $74 billion in the last financial year. Government now allows FDI in virtually all the sectors, the programs like Make in India, Digital India, Startup India, uh, Agriculture Export Policy, Liberalized Solar Power Policy with uh, Costa Rica's focus on renewable energy and to become one of the first country in the world to become a zero carbon emission country. Uh, there is uh, more opportunity. Uh, Costa Rica has already signed uh, International Solar Alliance, and uh, I'm hopeful that it will be uh, sometime soon be ratified uh, by the uh, National Assembly in Costa Rica and the president after that. Um, and so uh, these uh, these are the things I think uh, which are uh, going. To, we are going into the exciting times. So, uh, there is also possibility for the uh, Indian and Costa Rican companies to work together to work through uh, joint ventures, not uh, also apart from the other possibilities. And uh, with uh, with that, uh, I would like to once again uh, congratulate uh, Ambassador Arsorena and uh, Costa Rica on their Independence Day. And uh, thank you very much to Asocham and uh, my fellow uh, panelist uh, and uh, uh, wish you a good day. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Gangopadhyay. Thank you, Mr. Rawat. Uh, that that presentation was was very very comprehensive and you listening at our end and at the end in Costa Rica would be benefiting significantly from your insight into the into into the uh, into your presentation. Uh, uh, the the the, the diff different things that you spoke about i think three things uh, stand out for me and one was of course the fact that india and costa rica both have difficult terrains and therefore telecom sector could be a sector which could benefit tremendously the costa rican telecom sector our expertise in railways i think that that uh, it, it was another one and of course financing these pro uh, programs thank you so much sir for taking time and speaking to all I have the not so nice job of, of uh, moderating a question and answer session. Uh, let me at the outset say that there are more than 50 questions and it would be I was given 10 minutes and we are anyway, we have overshot the time limit given to us. So uh, it is impossible to take all the questions. We pick up five questions at random and uh, uh, address it to uh, to uh, to the panel and uh, anybody who wishes to speaker otherwise i would just address it to the panel and people could speak but no more than two minutes per answer because we would try to keep it with it to wind up this session thank you so much uh, so uh, the first question of course is to ambassador of costa rica but uh, despite the presence of major Indian companies from different sectors, the trade between India and Costa Rica is just what $75 million. What barriers do we need to remove and what sectors are, key, uh, are of key importance to improve? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Would you, want me to, would you want me to repeat the question? Yeah, because it was cut. The internet is, is okay, going, okay. Uh, Okay. Despite the presence of major Indian companies from different sectors, the trade between India and Costa Rica is just US $175 million. What barrier of key importance to improve the trade? Okay. Uh, it's a very good question. 
and uh, it's something that really concerns me, uh, trying to increase the trade between India and Costa Rica. Um, the major barriers, I think, is uh, tariffs uh, that are very high in India, and also the distance, uh, also with the cost of transportation is something to consider. However, Hey, hello. I think that um, we are going to have a reactivation of an MOU right now that was uh, signed in 2013. That will also help uh, increase trade and investment. However, um, I think a PTA, a preferential trade agreement, uh, not only for Costa Rica, but for the whole region, with India would be the best solution to increase the trade. Uh, we definitely have to um, improve this and also reduce the cost of transportation, which I think has been going down in the last 10 years or 20 years. And so I think we're in another stage uh, for having another I hope it will happen soon. And also, there are other issues like the double taxation agreement that we have to, as George Mahmoud have mentioned, is that we have to facilitate investors and also facilitate, um, you know, information of uh, companies that want to export and import in both countries. Um, so those are, I think, the, the main problems that we have. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Uh, my next question is to Ambassador Rawat. Uh, the question, Ambassador Rawat, entry point for Indian firms to Latin American region. Uh, how feasible will that be as an option? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, as I said uh, in my presentation, that Central American region uh, is uh, basically is a hub of hubs uh, because of the, uh, the this region joins both the uh, North America and South America, and it's the point shipping is so important, and uh, this is the only point uh, where you can cross uh, passing through a strip of land from Atlantic Ocean to. Pacific Ocean or vice versa, and uh, Costa Rica's known strength in the areas as uh, as has been brought out in this uh, webinar. So this, it, it provides a kind of hub, uh, logistic hub, or warehousing, and all those kind of things, uh, not only for uh, Indian companies to do business in Costa Rica and Central American region, for but also as a kind of supply chain or as, as a hub for uh, doing business in entire. Uh, Latin American region, and this is not something which is uh, uh, anything new in it. Uh, this is something which has been, it is being done by Indian companies right now, and the companies from uh, Europe or Asia, they have been doing it for uh, more than, uh, for almost a century now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. I I would I would uh, I would uh, like to say that I have been told that we would should stop here because we have over overshot tremendously the time. So may I request all the all the people who had put all these very very interesting questions in the chat box to kindly uh, write them to Asucham and they may uh, put you through to the right people who could answer these questions for you, uh, because a lot of questions are very specific about businesses like mushrooms and pharma and others. So I think it's a better thing if you could just get in touch with uh, Bhavna and Bhavna can uh, uh, you know direct you to the right person who could address these questions for you uh, so thank you ambassador the last before we finish today this very very interesting webinar we ha I have with me his excellency mr. Claudio An Ansorena uh, the ambassador of Costa Rica to India he would like to deliver the vote of thanks ambassador thank you very much it's been really a pleasure to discuss these issues that are so interesting and that will hopefully close the relationship to make it stronger and our communication will be much easier now through all of these internet videos that we can we can share.
Um, I thank uh, very much the participation of Ambassador Banga, Dr. Uh, Hirandani, uh, my friend George Mohut, uh, and uh, who I uh, hopefully uh, will be in touch uh, more frequently so that we can both work together in the same, uh, with the same objective. So thank you very much to all the panel. Uh, let's um, uh, also say thank you, Munish, and thank you all the people from CRIA in Costa Rica. And of course, thank you very much for uh, ASOCHAM, that it's been great to work uh, with you. And I hope that uh, all of the members of your chamber uh, will also think of Costa Rica when they think about making doing business. So thank you very much to all of you. And if you're in Delhi, please, anybody that wants to come and have some coffee, Costa Rican coffee, you're very welcome to the embassy. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Head of International Affairs, SOHM. On behalf of my team, a note of thanks to you. And we extend our warm wishes to our friends in Costa Rica for a happy Independence Day. Thank you very much with uh, SOHM to celebrate this momentous occasion. To this highly informative yeah. i would to place on record our deepest appreciation and gratitude to our honorable indian ambassador to costa rica mr opendra singh Ravati, for kindly accepting our invite and joining us on this occasion thank you sir thank, thank you, you. the moderator distinguished george mr munish Manchanda, Swarata, Sutta, enlightening us today with their ideas and for developing a strong India Costa Rica economic partnership. As we all are watching resiliently from the COVID 19 pandemic, this engagement has certainly given us a lot of things to understand what in India lateral going forward, build an inclusive, sustainable, and strategic partnership between our economies. Thanks to each one of you for your valuable time and support. Thanks to all the participants from India and Costa Rica. We had more than 50 participants, and I'm happy that around 100 are still with us. Uh, at this uh, hour for thanks to my team for supporting me in this webinar thanks again to all of you stay good and peaceful thank you